Bonjour, everyone. Welcome to RLNC Career Services Podcast, Episode 1. I'm your host, Rob Roy. Uh, this podcast will focus on career services and what route to take to reach your end goal. Uh, today, I have with me Mr. Dan King. Um, Dan, if you want to give a brief introduction, please. Thank you. Bonjour. Megazins, Nendishinikas, Jangweshe, Nendudem. My English name is Dan King, and I'm president of the Red Lake Nation College, and also uh, very honored to be one of the seven hereditary chiefs of the Red Lake Nation. I'm from the Mink Clan, and my family's from the town of Redby, and I'm very, very honored to also be the great, great, great grandson of one of our iconic hereditary chiefs, Maidway Ganonan. So uh, I'm very honored to sit in his uh, seat on the Tribal Council and very honored to be your first guest yes. of this new podcast. So that's pretty exciting. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for taking your time and being here today. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right, uh, just a quick interview. Uh, uh, what, what is your educational background? Yeah, I actually uh, started off I was the first in my family to actually go to finish high school. So the first to finish high school and then the first in my big, huge family on my mom's side and my dad's side to go to college. So that's what I've learned later is called first generation college student. So about 60 to 70 percent of our current students are in that same boat, like the first ones to go to college. So I went to St. Thomas University of St. Thomas for uh, as a business major in the Twin Cities. So that was my undergrad. Then I continued on uh, at St. Thomas to start a master's degree, an MBA, Master's of Business Administration. And then I finished up online and then also later added a second master's uh, from Harvard, Harvard University, a uh, Master of Public Administration. So those are the, the three main degrees that I got. All right, good. Thank you. Um, what about what about a little about your uh, employ, employment history? Yeah, really, uh, my main background is in business. So I spent almost, man, it's kind of embarrassing to say this. <laughs> it's almost 40 years. So I, I always remember being the young guy doing everything. I was always the kid or the younger person. Now, now I'm the older guy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's almost 40 years in business. So I started out working for Lando Lakes, the butter company. Mm, I was a sales rep. So that was my start was in sales. And then from there, I went on to be the general manager at the Red Lake Fisheries. And that was back when fishing was kind of the main business. So a lot of Red Lakers will remember that, where fishing was the big deal around here. And so I was only 26 when I was the manager. So I was 26 and I looked like I was about 15. So (laughs) I remember... uh, one of the fishermen saw me and, and they said, this is the new manager. And then that fisherman goes, we're putting our fishing industry in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't give me a lot of confidence, but uh, they were testing me. And so mm-hmm. anyway, though, that was 26. And then uh, from there, I went on to work in gaming for about 20 years, work for Mille Lacs Band, the Mille Lacs Tribe at Mille Lacs and Hinkley. I was the first employee at Hinkley and then went on to work for Treasure Island Casino in the cities. I was the CEO at Lower Sioux, and so really just spent most of my career working in business, mostly in mm. casinos. Yeah. So that was my background. So I really spent mostly all my career working in the business field. All right, thank you. Um, what about what about now? Uh, what is your position now, and a little bit about the responsibilities with that position? Right now, my uh, main job is as the president of the Red Lake Nation College, and it's not a job I really planned for. Um, I kind of just fell into this because I had a a heart surgery in 2009, a quintuple bypass, so I I was 100% blocked, so I'm really lucky to be sitting here Mm -hmm. right now. So um, fortunately, I made it through that, but at the time, the doctor said, well, what do you do for a living? You know, where do you work, you know? And because usually they think there might be an environmental cause. Sure enough, I told him I managed casinos. He goes, well, cigarette smoke. He goes, that's oh, a big yeah. factor, you know. And even though I never smoked, 
that had a big impact. And, and then I spent a lot of time at those casinos and on the floor. So I really couldn't go back to there after I had the heart surgery. He said, if you go back, you probably won't last three to five years, mm-hmm. you know. So you need to find something else to do. So then I just started teaching a class over at the Red Lake Nation College, a business. They didn't have any uh, people with MBAs mm-hmm. to teach the classes. So I started teaching and I said, hey, this school could really be something. And then at the time, uh, the chairman, uh, Jordan, uh, Buck Jordan, said, Dan, you know, we're looking for a president. Why don't, why don't you be the president? And I said, well, I, I don't have any background in education. I can run it like a business, and then I can hire the people to be in charge of academics. So that's kind of what I did. I mm-hmm. ran it like a business, and that's worked out really good doing it this way. Nice. And so I've been doing this for the last 11 years, and probably my favorite job I ever had. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, how did you become interested in this field? Yeah, I think, like I was saying, it, it kind of just fell into it. And really, I talked to other presidents who were of tribal colleges and other, any mainstream school, most everybody, they didn't really plan on being a, a college president. Yeah. It, this, this is not many of them. And, it's just something that, that kind of happens <laughs> throughout your life. So I think I just kind of fell into it and then loving the teaching so much. And I've always mm-hmm. been like a coach, you know, in baseball and I played hockey. So I coached when I was younger and I always loved doing that. And to me, that's what this job feels like. It feels like coaching, you know, the rest of the team, you know, our faculty, staff, and then the students. You know, I like seeing people like you, you know, yep. I had you in my class, yeah. in my speech yep. class. And seeing people like you, you know, come along and progress, and now you're doing so great working here. Yeah. So to me, I get a lot of uh, pleasure out of that. And then when you come close to dying, like I did with that heart surgery, it really makes you think, what's the important stuff? You mm-hmm. know, is making money really important? You know, or is something else? Having an impact in people's lives and helping people—that's yeah. really important. You know, that's the important yeah. stuff. So in a hundred years from now. You know, are they going to say, well, so-and-so made a lot of money, you know, or they had a high-level job? That's not going to matter. No one's going to care about that. They're going to care about, oh, geez, look at that new, that college. Look what they did. You know, this guy had a, had a hand in that. Yeah. So that's the important stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. when you can make a difference for your community. That, exactly, that's, that's yeah. Huge. It's satisfying, you know, and this, is, this doesn't even feel like a job to me. It mm-hmm. just feels like something I have to be doing. And I've never felt that before in any of my jobs. I've had some good jobs, you know, like a GM or a casino manager or a CEO of a company. But I've never felt like this is what I should be doing. But here at the college, I feel like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, say in high school, uh, early college, uh, what, what career did you plan on? Did you have a... Yep. Yeah, good question. Yeah, I, I did have a plan. I was thinking I was going to work for a corporation. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I actually did. I started out working for Lando Lakes, the butter company. Yeah. I was a sales rep, and I learned a lot in that job and from that company that still helps me to this day. Because when you can sell stuff, really, you're doing that a lot in your life. So I was a professional salesperson, and they trained me to be a professional salesperson. But I had three internships while I was at St. Thomas. In the summers, I worked for Orlando Lakes, you know. And these were serious summer jobs. I wasn't working as, you know, a lifeguard or anything like that. So I had jobs that led into that job. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, yeah, I would, this is a great company. You know, they're a fortune, one of the 200 biggest companies in the U.S. So I thought, I'm going to work for them and keep moving up, and I'll be a vice president. And, you know, all, all that. I had the typical kind of a a desire like that, and maybe get an MBA. So I was thinking I'd be in a corporate world, you know. But then I just wasn't excited doing it, you know. I couldn't get excited about selling a truckload of butter for, you know, a couple pennies less than the other guy. (laughs) It just wasn't exciting. And I kept gravitating back to Red Lake, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, then I came up here, and I was visiting more, and then I found out that, you know, through my dad that there was a job opening at the fisheries. And that that could be a career, and so then that's kind of how I got started. Thank you. Uh, well, what are some of the other career paths that people can look for in, in this field? 
I think in, there's a lot of good career paths in uh, the tribal colleges. You look at teaching could mm-hmm. be a career path. You know, you get an undergrad, maybe get a master's or even a PhD. And 70% of our faculty and staff right now are people like you. They're tribal members mm-hmm. or they're members of other tribes that are working here. So uh, to me, that's pretty good, you know, mm-hmm. 70%, you know, whereas at a lot of other places on reservations, you know, the schools are 90, 95% non-native people teacher as teachers yeah. so i think we need a lot more red lakers we need a lot more tribal members as teachers in classes we need a lot more members as top managers you know we got people like uh you know brandon over there our production guy you know he's got a four-year degree from university of minnesota you know he's got a future leadership here at the college so we got a lot of members with yeah. four-year degrees <clears throat> and I think we we need to keep going and get more with masters, and so then they can take over. You know, I got probably, uh, you know, I'm 58 now, so I probably got about 10 more years. Mm-hmm. I think I can still be working at a high level. So once I do that, though, we're going to need other people to take over. You know, yeah. in another 10 years, so we need tribal members to continue on, get their educations, and then they'll be the top people running this. Because I think it's real important that we have. Red Lake members as our leaders here at the Tribal College and really all of our businesses and our main entities. All right. uh, what type of advice could you give uh, about time management? <clears throat> I think time management is one of the most important things for really to be successful in college. <clears throat> really in college and in really most any position. But that's underrated, and I think people don't give that enough thought and planning. But that was probably the most important thing that, that made me successful in college was managing your time. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's an old saying that manage the minutes, you know, for the hours will take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, so you really gotta, you know, because most most of our students, they have jobs and they have families they're taking care of, and they're college students, number three. So it's extra important to manage and plan out, you know, going to class time, and then, of course, the study time, time to write papers. But then you need time away from that, too. You need to plan time to go, you know, watch a football game or, you know, yeah, yeah. well, whatever you and your family like doing, hunting, fishing, whatever. Plan time to get away from that, too, because you need, you need a break from the school. So I think time management is one of the most important factors for being successful in, in not only in college but in life. Yeah. Yep. Uh, what would you say you like most about your work you do? I would say the satisfaction of helping people, seeing people grow and continue on, and like maybe they come in and they're <clears throat> real shy and they're they don't you know they're just un- not confident that's sure of themselves. And then after a year or two, and then you see them grow and they get more confident, they're more outgoing. And then they transfer to BSU. And then you hear about them at BSU. We got a student right now who is one of our top students here. And she went down there. She's flourishing down at BSU and and just watching the reports on her and thinking, wow, she's getting scholarships. And now she's a top student down there, you know. So that, that you feel like you had a part in that, you know, so yeah. that's that's good to see. And then later on, you know, I'd like to see them running for tribal council or something yeah. and then, you know, being our tribal leaders. So it's kind of, it's a good feeling to have a part of that, you know. Yeah. Uh, what would you say you like least about your work? Uh, I would say probably the, like when you have to discipline you know, when there's discipline issues that come up or yeah. uh, like an incident where, you know, there's something on campus that, you know, it's kind of you have to carry the stick a little bit. And, yeah. You know, uh, I suppose the discipline part of it because, you know, our philosophy here is be hard on problems and soft on people. Yeah. So we try to do that. But sometimes there's just no other way to say, well, somebody messes up, you got to tell them, hey, yeah. you got to do this yeah. or you got to write them up or something like. So to me, that that's not the fun part, you know. I, I like the supportive kind yeah. of carrot. I'm more of a carrot yeah. type person. Give them the carrot and incentives rather than, you know, just like, kind of like how we did with our uh, COVID. 
you know, we had an incentive. We said, we want people to get the shot, but, you know, we don't want to force people, so let's offer them $200. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, and then people want to get the shot, right? Yeah. And then we said, all right, let's offer another 200 for the booster. And you know what? We got 100% of our staff and faculty all with the shot. Yeah. And they did it willingly because they're thinking, well, all right, I get a couple hundred bucks. Even if they didn't really want to get it, yeah. they got it. So to me, I think the carrot is the incentives are more effective than, you know, being hard on somebody and yelling at them. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Um, Have you ever dealt with a hostile work environment? Um, if so, uh, what, what advice can you give? Yeah, I think anybody who's worked in Indian country (laughs) can say that, right? And that's not being hard, that's being a realist. And, you know, I I like to say that, you know, working in Indian country and not just Red Lake, anywhere, really, uh, it's kind of like dog years, you know, one year equals seven, you know, so it feels like a long time, (laughs) you know. But I would say here at the college and working with the tribe since 2010, you know, when I came back to work at the college as a president, We've had like an excellent, I, we couldn't have a more supportive tribal council. We couldn't have a more supportive college board. Mm-hmm. So this is a really unusual place to work right now and a, just a perfect place, I think. And, and we're very fortunate to have everybody kind of going in the same direction. Yeah. So nobody's fighting against us. We, we don't have to waste any time on politics. We're all focused on making the best moves for the tribe yeah. and the tribal college. And, and I think this is going to have a big impact, not only now but into the future, because if we're not here, the next closest place to go to school is down in Bemidji. You know, that's an hour, hour and a half of driving, you know, every day. And that's what keeps people from going to college. So we're, we're the access point. We're the bridge to higher education. So I think we need our tribal college to be successful. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I I agree. Yeah. Are are there opportunities for advancement in this field? Oh yeah, I think so. Um, there's a big shortage of teachers right now. Mm. You know, everywhere, not only at K to twelve, but at the college level. So, I think there's a lot of job. We're always going to have jobs for instructors. You know, then there's a lot of people like my age, the baby boomers. You know, I'm right at the end of the baby boom. So. Um, all these people my age are starting to retire mm-hmm. and a lot of teachers out there. And then same with the healthcare field. There's a lot of people retiring and then there's this big boom of older people like my age. So for the next 20, 30 years, there's going to be a tons of people in the healthcare, needing healthcare, at-home care, you know, the elder clinics. Yeah. So uh, there's going to be job security in all those areas. And look at law enforcement now. You know, a lot of people left law enforcement in the last couple of years. So I think there's a lot of good opportunities, healthcare, education, business. We need more business people. We need more accountants. We need more doctors, lawyers, social workers, just about any field you can think of. Mm-hmm. We need tribal members. But the key is they have to be educated. They have to get the, the two-year degree with us, and then they can transfer and go on transfer their credits here and go on anywhere they want. So to specialize in a master's or in, a, in, their, in their major area of emphasis. Uh, what would you say some of the daily issues, uh, problems within this field? I would say probably our biggest challenge is maybe high school kids who are really coming to college, but they're not fully prepared. Mm-hmm. So, you know, our average student comes in about a ninth or 10th grade level. So they come to college and just think about that. They got to go from ninth or 10th grade to junior in college in two years. Yeah. You know, so that's like five, six levels, you know, in two years. So we got a big challenge. So I think getting our students ready, you know, uh, that's probably one of our biggest everyday challenges, mm-hmm. you know, like getting them caught up in math and English and you know, just helping them one-on-one. That's why we have small classes, so we can help people. If we, if we had big, huge 25, 30 people in classes, I don't think we could help everybody. So that's why we keep them small, mm-hmm. so there's a lot of one-on-one yeah. help because yeah. we need to. What, what related fields would you also recommend? 
Um, I think, I think like business is a good related field. Um, you know, whether teaching it or just going out, you know, and, and looking at a business field, you can do anything with that. Um, same with healthcare, like I mentioned, is a good field. Um, and even, look, honestly, a lot of the construction fields are good yeah. right now. I mean, um, there's a big shortage in construction, electricians, plumbers. You can make, I think you can, you can make it in pretty much any field right now, any field, as long as you have the specialized training that you need. So whether that's a one-year program or you decide to come here for a two-year, there's so many opportunities right now, but literally all of them require some kind of specialized further education or training. So I would strongly encourage everybody to further their educations in mm -hmm. whatever it is that interests them. Uh, how how would you say your job affects your general lifestyle? Yeah, I think it kind of consumes it a little, but <laughs> you know, because it's pretty much twenty four seven. You know, this job never ends. And but I, you know, I kind of like it though. It doesn't really bother me because it, it doesn't feel like working. Yeah, you know, I don't feel like I'm working. And I think the key to that is if you find something that you love doing or that you know, you're passionate about and excited then it doesn't really seem like work. Yeah, then it's so, not a job. Yeah, yeah, it's not a job. And that's kind of what you're going for, I think, in life. So if you can find that, and I'm kind of lucky that I'm doing that right now, and, and I would have never thought this would be that kind of a job, mm -hmm. you know, because I didn't think it was going to be. And I think that might be one of the questions you asked. What well, was it like you thought? You know, I worked in, like, running casinos, and I always thought that was pretty, you know, intense, and it was, you know, like when you were there. But it wasn't, I mean, once I left there, I didn't really have to think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, had, it was actually, I think, a lot easier than, than this job. This is probably one of the hardest jobs I've had because it's so consuming, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we have to do so many, like every one of our employees, and you know this from working here, we have to do like two or three or four jobs, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of things you do. And you do what it takes because we have a small staff. Yeah. So we don't have... We're not like BSU or University of Minnesota where they got 50 people working on specialized things. And like we did our accreditation, this is a good example. Our accreditation, we were talking to other schools and they said, oh, we have our committee that works on this part of the, of the report. You know, we have this big accreditation report we have to do. And they go, how many people are on your committees? You know, and they have little committees for each part of the report, there's five parts. So they have, groups of 20 or 30 working on just one little section. And here we got like four or five people uh -huh. working on the whole thing, yeah. you know. So that's, that's the big difference, you know. We have to do a bunch of different jobs. Uh, what kind of advice would you, could you give to someone who is considering a career in education? Or yeah, I would just find the area that, that they're passionate about, you know, whatever that is, whatever the subject matter is, and then I would focus on that. And whether it's college age, you know, or, you know, even younger, you know, some people like teaching high school, some people like elementary, just kind of find that little sweet spot where you feel yeah. most comfortable. And I would highly recommend teaching as a profession. And, and people used to say, oh, that's not a good field or... You know, uh, and the pay has really come up, you know, in recent years. So, and the benefits are usually pretty good working for schools or, you know, like we have excellent benefits here at the college, so better than I've ever had working for any company. So, you know, I think things have changed a lot. And, and it is very re rewarding working with, with our students, I think, because our students are, you know, maybe a little bit older on average, you know, about 29 is the average, and most of them have families, you know, and kids. And when they come back to school, they really want to go. You know, they're, they're motivated. They're highly motivated. So it's, it's good working with people like that. And then the younger kids coming right out of high school now, very sharp, you know, very mm -hmm. technology, uh, you know, good with technology. Yep. And just way, they just seem way more advanced than when I graduated from high school. I wasn't like that, you know. So these kids today are pretty sharp. And we're getting more of them come right out of high school. So, you know, I'm pretty optimistic about our future in Red Lake and we got so many people going you know we, we graduate 10 to 15 up to 20 every year and then those students are going on you know uh -huh. they're either going into good jobs better paying jobs <laughs> or they're transferring to other schools 
And so, and then I'm seeing them go to schools like, you know, not only BSU, a lot of them to BSU, but University of Minnesota. Yeah. You know, they're going to Morris, they're going to Twin Cities campus, Augsburg. You know, we had a student go out to uh, Dartmouth yeah. and then graduate from Dartmouth, you know, from Red Lake Nation College. So our students can go anywhere and compete, you know. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of our students and, and we have quite a few of them here. I think we have two or three or four of our graduates working here, you know, with two-year degrees, you mm. know, that's still working on a four-year. And then others that have graduated from four years working here. So I think we, we get a lot of students in the pipeline for higher yeah. education. Yeah, so that's a, a good thing. A lot of potential out there. Oh, great potential. Yeah. Are there exp expectations that you had about this career path that differed from reality, uh, either good, bad, or both? Yeah, I would say, you know, it was probably, I, I didn't think it was going to be as uh, encompassing, you know, because I always thought business would be harder. Oh, that's education, you know. But it actually is more challenging, and because there's a lot more things to do, and no matter how many things I do, I come in like to the office and I got a list of like say seven things I want to do that day. Some days I get to one. You know, some days I don't even get to one. Mm -hmm. Like I walk in the door and then three people talk to me, oh, we got this issue. And, that. and so then I start dealing with that. Yeah. And then by the time I get upstairs and someone calls me and it's you know, somebody from the tribe and then there's an issue with the program and you know, ours and then there's a budget question and so I got to do a report, and then at the end of the day, come and and then a student comes in in the afternoon, and so I end up talking yeah. to them for longer. And so by the end of the day, I don't get to one of my items, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I've still helped a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know. So so then I got to go home at night, and then I work on those seven items. So I'm doing that at home, yeah. you know. So that's how it is. It's like you know, sometimes it seems like no matter how much you do, you can never knock all those items yeah. off your list, you know. So in a way, that can be frustrating sometimes, but it just shows that there's so much to do up here and so many needs, you know, for mm. our reservation. So to me, that's what makes it, like, worth it because this is for Red Lake. You know, I wouldn't want to be doing this for anybody else's tribe. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I want Red Lake to, to see the benefits. Uh, are there routinely... Uh, are you routine, routinely offered professional development opportunities in your position? Yeah, I, I, yeah, and it does happen quite a bit. And, and a lot of times, actually, for me personally, it's kind of the gaming type of opportunities <laughs> where to go back into gaming, you know. Mm. But health-wise and, you know, sometimes it does seem appealing, you know, because there's good money. But like I said before, you know, in 100 years, nobody's going to care whether you made a lot of money. It's going to be really about the impact you made yeah. in other people's lives. And to me, you know, now that I've, I've had my close call, that's the most important thing. So I really feel, like, satisfied working here. And to me, that's more important than anything else. So, yeah, my goal is to finish my career up here doing mm -hmm. this and helping Red Lake. And now we got not only this beautiful campus and all the stuff we're doing, we got our accreditation in the last year. Now, next year, and this year, and next year, we're going to be planning our expansion into the Minneapolis to yeah. serve our, we have 8,000 members down there, approximately. So serving those tribal members down there. So to me, that's going to be real exciting, working on that project. So that gets me, like, fired up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Uh, are, there, are there any questions that I didn't ask that you think would be a helpful piece of information for our listeners? Yeah, no, really good questions, Rob. I think you guys are going to have a really good uh, uh, run here with these podcasts. So I think that's awesome. So you get on the radio station too, right? Yeah. <laughs> one one day. Yeah, yeah, I think you will. But I would say uh, to our our members or students or people listening is that when you come up to your barriers in life, whatever that is, you know, you're going to have a fight or flight moment. So what are you going to do? Are you going to stand here and fight for this, or are you going to just walk away? Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, just remember that in the end, it's always where you end up in life that matters, not where you start from. Because when I first started, you know, we talked about this before, I, I remember being so afraid of going to college because I didn't know what it was like. Nobody in my family ever did it before, and then who the heck was I thinking I was going to college, you know? Because mm, yeah. I had people say that to me. 
You know, who, I got better grades than you. Who the hell do you think you are, you know? Or there are people say, oh, you're not going to make it. You know, you, you're not going to. You know, the, to me, that would just piss me off. And then fire me up, too, to mm. say, all right, I'll show them. You know, but I would say when you come up to those moments when you're not sure if you can make it or not, just fight through it. Because if you're determined to make it in the end, in the long run, what you think on the inside and in your heart, that's the most important thing. It's not what anybody else thinks. So I would say fight through those, those times of, of, of a barrier and find a way over it because in the long run, it's going to be worth it. Because when we're all college students, we all had that fear we face, you know, and for anybody to have the courage to go to college and face that fear, you've already done kind of the biggest thing right there. Yeah. So I would say just keep going and just say to yourself, you're going to graduate. I'm, gonna, I'm determined to make it. And once you make it through, it's all going to be worth it in the long run. Because we were all sitting in the same spot at one time. Yes. I remember when I first started, it didn't look very good. You know, it's, oh, mm-hmm. this guy's from the projects. He's the youngest. Nobody graduates from high school. Nobody goes to college. He doesn't have any money. It's not going to work, you know. Anybody would have looked at me and said, there's no way he's going to make it. Not only did I make it through, but then I finished, got a master's, and went to Harvard. So, I mean, if I can do that from where I started from, anybody can do yeah. anything. So that's why I, I think it's just a good lesson that, you know, anything can happen. Yeah. All right. Um, that's all the questions I had for you today. I uh, thank you for taking your time out today. All right. Thanks for having me, Rob. Yeah, yeah good job. And that'll our first episode of the Red Lake Nation College Career Services Podcast. Thank you. Until next time.